Hello my friends and welcome to Philobytes, a series where I'm going to be talking about whatever the heck I want. And today, I want to be talking about HP Lovecraft. Not the typical topic, but more so that Lovecraft is not horror. It's not scary, not even in the slightest bit. I've been making it a point to go through the history, the extant works of H.P. Lovecraft over the past few weeks, and in all honesty, none of it is scary. Oftentimes descriptions don't lend themselves to any sort of fear in the affect of the reader, or at least not in me, and I have an idea as to why this is the case. Now, the idea of Lovecraft as a work of horror, as horror fiction, is the idea of cosmic horror as a genre, not just under Lovecraft, but under many different authors, those who both influenced Lovecraft and were influenced by him, and the Cthulhu mythos as a whole being born out of it. The issue, however, the idea of cosmic horror is that the human being is insignificant, uncared for by the vast, powerful, and unknowable mysterious forces of the cosmos, that the world itself is cold and unknowing and does not care to know about the human experience. Now that on its face could be scary for some, but what would be the source of that fear? Well, fear is something that comes from the unknown. Famously, the original Alien movie spent nearly the entirety of the film not showing you what the monster looked like in order to create in the audience a building sense of dread, a belief that something from somewhere in space came to attack you and you had no way of knowing what it was because you had no way of seeing it, no way of looking at it, and without identification, you weren't able to make a plan and therefore were disempowered. Your lack of knowledge weakened you, and that created fear. What was a sci-fi movie, a genre that is not used for horror for the most part nowadays, was the essence of horror. William Burke was a philosopher that was concerned with various ideas of divinity and religion, and something that came as a part of his philosophy was a definition of the sublime, which he defined as being both amazed and fearful at the same time. To recognize the supreme goodness of something, and because of its immense power, Realizing your own limitations would cause you to be afraid of it. It was so good and so much more powerful than you, who was not as good as the sublime perfection of the universe, of the world, of creation itself. And because of that, the human had to fear, but underneath the fear, that willingness to give up your self-importance was in a way beautiful and that connection to the true essence of reality created a intense euphoric feeling which Burke described as the sublime. Cosmic horror is essentially one step short of Burke's idea of the sublime. It goes to fear, but does not get to the point of accepting the nature of reality, realizing your place in it, and being happy at that realization. The fear of cosmic horror is that the person, the human, or any given individual is not important. They are not the center of the world, and in the past, this could be a very disturbing notion. 
people were significantly more individualistic than they are now, as societies have globalized and interacted, collectivism and individualism have started to blend together into various different meshes that change depending not just on your culture of your country, but of the subculture and the specific subculture of even your neighborhood, or even what online community you belong to. Communities are infinitely more accessible and infinitely more numerous, so the role of the individual in any given community seems to go away. Humanity is a significant distance away from having a Terra-centric model of the solar system. We tend to think of God in any of our religious discourses as not having a direct line of communication with any given or even special people. It is the rare exception that religious people still believe that a person speaking in tongues is having a direct connection with the divine. And with a growth in popularity of existentialism, a school of philosophy whose word existential has become nearly synonymous with philosophy itself, we have come to see that our knowledge, our understanding of things, our valuing of things is ultimately entirely made up. Or at least the majority of people believe that Value is not inherent in the world, but inherent in their own discretion. And because every given person gets to write values for themselves, no one's values are more important than another's. Being precedes essence. Birth precedes meaning. In other words, the average person no longer sees themselves as special. Not in the way they used to, not in the grand and supreme beloved by God and the universe itself kind of special that humanity used to reserve itself in the ultimate cosmology of reality. And since the average person no longer sees humanity as special, why would the idea that the universe does not see humanity as special be scary. Well, it's not anymore. The idea of an unfeeling, uncaring, ultimately powerful and frightening, dangerous, destructive universe is just the norm. Venturing out into space is an amazing endeavor taken on by scientists and mathematicians, astronauts, and every country of the world that can contribute. But we respect that even one simple mistake will lead to every single person dying. Space itself is as powerful as any cosmic horror in the Cthulhu mythos. Its infinite vastness is just as likely to drive a person mad as not if you are left in a shuttle and have no one around. We understand these things. And because we understand how insignificant we are, that knowledge has broken the fear of cosmic horror. Now, the Cthulhu mythos is simply interesting, in the same way Tolkien and folklore is interesting. They are simply collections of cool creatures with interesting descriptions that can be placed in a non-fantasy style story, though most often in a mystery, helping the reader go along to uncover the truth and because they've uncovered the truth, in Lovecraft's description, they should go mad. But in reality, we get to learn about the thing. And learning about it and understanding the horror that is supposed to be some elder god, it no longer becomes scary. The entire genre of cosmic horror is based around the idea of learning about it. And because we learn about it, and it is not presented in a way such that we cannot learn about it. It is not presented in such a way that it would actually cause us to feel insignificant in a way that would make us scared anymore because we have already accepted our cosmic insignificance in our day-to-day -day lives and were quite frankly not bothered by it. It's simply not scary. But does it have to be? Absolutely not. It's cool 
It's interesting. It's a unique cultural artifact. It is a means of telling stories. And because it is a means of telling unique and different stories, it is a means by which we may establish meaning for ourselves in unique and different ways. It offers us a other set, a different cultural origin point by which we can explore ideas of physics and science in ways that aren't limited to previous notions, previous religiosity, previous folklore and superstitions. It is one step removed from that most fundamental way of looking at reality that humans started with, yet also not entirely removed from the intuitive way that we understand the world. Lovecraftian horror, cosmic horror, it's not scary anymore, but what it does do for us is help us establish meaning. It's not fear, but it is existentialism in action. It's the folklore of a modern philosophy. And when these stories become ancient to future generations, they will be looked at as cultural touchstones by which our contemporary ideas were understood. It's not scary, but it's still pretty cool. Thank you for watching my friends. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscription bell below and like the video so that the infinitely knowing YouTube algorithm can suggest it to other people who might be interested to see it. Make sure to investigate the description of this video so that you can explore all of my different creative works around the internet and find new ways that you can help support this channel's growth. I will see you next time, have a wonderful evening, and as always, stay true.